What is up, Mike O'Dowd with USCCA, and today as part of our vehicle defense series, we're gonna be going over places to carry inside your vehicle. So we get a lot of questions of like, where do we carry? Well, if it's not on our person when we're in a vehicle, maybe it's in an off-body bag, or maybe it's in a center console, or maybe it's in the trunk. What we're gonna do is go through the entire spectrum of places you can carry in a car, time it, see how fast we can react from getting it out of the safe or getting it out of the glove compartment and taking shots. And the hope is we're gonna give you the most information so you can make a better decision to protect yourself and your family. So first thing we're gonna test out is our baseline. We're gonna show you the time that it takes to get my gun out if I carry it on my person. So I'm carrying appendix right now, got my Glock 19, got my shot timer, and we're gonna just see how fast as a baseline, if I keep this gun right next to me, can I get it out and engage a target? Got a piece of steel a little bit behind this camera, and uh, let's see how it goes. All right, we got a time of two, three, two. 232 was my time out of the holster. So that one was from my, uh, my appendix carry. It's not quite realistic, but hopefully this gives you a comparison to some of the other methods uh, and other places I'm gonna be carrying. So for this one, I'm gonna take my Glock 19 and I'm gonna put it against this rare earth magnet. Now, this is not to simulate a uh, center console test. I'm gonna keep it wide open. This is gonna simulate if you have a holster or a magnet drilled into the side of your car, somewhere where you can just pull out and access uh, directly. Um, in some states this is totally allowed, and in some states it's not. Like I'm in California, absolutely no way you can just roll around with the gun sitting out. So this one should be fairly quick, but uh, just know this is not a center console test. Okay, that was 217. That was actually faster than appendix. Uh, could be that I'm getting warmed up. Pretty comparable though, about like a tenth or two tenths of a second off. I would say for me, it felt good just to be able to reach down and grab, not have to worry about a seat belt or not have to worry about my pants or moving a shirt if I was wearing a jacket. I really like that one. Uh, the con I would say to something like that is my gun is fully exposed. Uh, it feels a little weird having my gun on a rare earth magnet. If I got into like an accident, maybe would that hold? Um, also, am I leaving it in the car or am I putting it there every time I get in the car? My thought process goes to if I put it in the car every single time, good, because I have muscle memory. If I go back and forth between having it in my waist or having it in the car or having it in a bag, I gotta believe that that muscle memory just won't be there to reach for it every single time. All right, so for this next one, we're gonna run a uh, drill from the center console. Everyone's consoles are slightly different, but uh, I'm gonna open, draw, and take my shots. I'm guessing it's gonna be about the same time. I've never actually done it, so let's see what it does. And sitting, waiting. All right, missed that first shot, but the first shot was 257. The hit was at 308. 257 was uh, the first shot, though. Where I noticed the speed was challenging was once I got it open, actually finding the grip uh, of this, kind of finding the gun was a little bit more challenging. Opening it was quite easy. Um, where my head goes immediately is when you're driving around and this is loose in the compartment, will it always be in the same place every time? Will it be turned? Will it be upside down? Will it be left hand grab, right hand grab? So my first thought is, okay, if I'm gonna keep this in a center console, I probably want it either mounted to something like a magnet or mounted to a holster or just in, oriented in a place where it's gonna be the same grip and same grab every time. Otherwise, that's gonna be the bottleneck of speed uh, in my opinion. All right, for the next test, a lot of people carry in their glove compartment box, uh, whether it's legal or not, you just hear about this all the time. Police are constantly getting guns from people's glove compartments. 
Uh, it's a convenient place because it conceals your weapon. So I'm gonna put the Glock 19 here in this center console. You may not have it, yours may be lower, maybe farther, but this is the one I'm gonna be doing for the test. All right, that's a 329 first shot. 329 first shot, so it's a bit slower than some of the other shots uh, by almost a second. I kind of want to retry that to see if I can get quicker, but it is a long reach for this. And I also, as I open it, I open it, it's a slow, so I hit it up, grab it. The grip itself, it's hard to get. Seatbelt actually didn't get in the way. Maybe like a smaller, shorter person with a shorter arm span, maybe not able to get it. My biggest concern again is, is this gonna be moving around and changing position while I'm driving? I mean, definitely yes. I wanna give it one more shot just to see if I can be a little bit faster, but. One. That was 303, 303, so that's a little bit faster, but it's still slower than center console. It's not right here. I have to lean over, grab it. I don't think I could get much faster than that. And once again, this is under perfect circumstances that are not realistic. I have the cars in park, I'm sitting here waiting for a timer to go off. So that's like ideal, but it's still about a half second uh, or more slower than uh, the other ones we've done so far. So. That is the glove compartment test. For the next test we're gonna do, I brought out a vault safe. I'm not sponsored by vault but I use these personally. I have them all over the place. It's a great way to have a locked, concealed gun. You can travel with these things. You can go through TSA with these things. Uh, also, I always wanted to see how fast it was to get out of my car, because people will drive with these. The gun will be in the back seat or in the front seat. How this locks, it has a side manual lock and then it has a pad key lock. Uh, you set the combo to whatever you want and then it's ready to go. Stand by. All right, that was 529, 529. It felt slow. That feels really slow. You're sitting here like open, 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 open. Um, I can't imagine something popping off and having to go for my safe and get it out. Uh, something imminent and having that five seconds to actually respond. Like if somebody was beating down my door of uh, the car or somebody was actually trying to climb in the car or pull me out or somebody shooting at the car, that's a bad situation. Uh, however, it is a safe way to carry your weapon, and if something was happening and you had a little bit of time and distance, 529 uh, may not be that long for what you need. So, all right, for the next test, we have a lot of people who carry off-body bags, and we've done a lot of videos with off-body bags. I've taken some pretty heavy brain damage for off-body bags. Um, people, people like hate these or love these, and we're gonna show, you know, if I have my off-body bag, because it's way more comfortable than driving with an appendix carry gun sitting in my waistband. If I have that thing right here, is it fast to get into the bag and take my shots? But, uh, you know, depending on your ability, you may not be legally allowed to carry in an off-body bag inside your car, right? If, if you don't have a uh, concealed carry license or the state that you're in doesn't allow that. So double check your laws, but uh, if you are able to, let's find out how fast you can get out from an off-body bag. This one is the Eberl stock, uh, the kind of briefcase bag, but uh, they're all somewhat similar in like the opening mechanism and how fast you can get them out. Woo, mag change. First shot was three, four, five. That was faster. That was faster. Everything was perfect on that one. I got a perfect hand grab inside, turned, um, is that ideal? Yeah, that's ideal. That's not realistic. So if you carry off body, you can expect somewhere between three and a half to even five seconds of, uh, of an experience. And that's assuming the bag is right next to you, able to grab out. All right, for this test, we're gonna start using the trunk. A lot of people, especially here in California, uh, they like to leave their guns in the trunk. 
according to the law, remember it's container, locked container, or trunk separated, unloaded. So we right now have a pistol unloaded, separate, and we have a magazine uh, separate in the trunk. Did a quick vehicle change for you guys, and uh, we're gonna see how this one goes. All right, I have a feeling it's gonna be much, much slower, but let's try it. Hey, I'm pausing the video right now to let you know about a free giveaway that USCCA has going on right now. Check out the link below for all the details, and let's get back to the video. Oh boy. Uh, get out. Done, get the ammo, load, rack. Woo! Oh, all right, that was 1138. 1138, 11 seconds, 11.38 seconds. Um, right off the top of my head, I felt terrible getting out of the car. I did not like how long that took, getting the seat belt out, opening the door, getting out of that cramped compartment just felt like it was taking so long. Uh, secondly, opening up the trunk and the gun's not ready, I still have to pop open whatever, uh, whatever compartment it's in, load, rack, felt terrible. Did not like that one bit, but I do, I'll give it a little bit of a silver lining. Running out of the car to cover and maybe beyond, that actually didn't feel too bad. You know, when you're, being ambushed in a car or like being attacked and you can't get away, uh, you know, can't drive the vehicle away. Another, you know, great tactic is to get out, just get out of the, the fatal funnel of the vehicle. So that part, I didn't hate that part. I did like being able to run away. Okay, so something to note of how I had this set up. I actually just had a Glock box, like the one when you buy a Glock, it comes in the black little compartment. So there was no locking mechanism on it. If you had a locking mechanism, that's just another pain in the ass you're gonna have to deal with. And then how is your ammo stored? Carrying in the trunk is a real, real hindrance. Um, do not recommend it, but uh, if that's the way you carry, just make sure you practice this way. Okay, for this next test, we are going to kind of debunk something that in here in California, people do this all the time when they come to our classes. As per the Secretary of State of California, uh, may transport by motor vehicle any handgun provided it is unloaded and locked in the vehicle's trunk unloaded and locked in the vehicle's trunk or in a locked container now a locked container means a secure container that is fully enclosed locked by padlock key lock which is what we're going to show or combination lock or a similar locking device this includes the trunk of a motor vehicle this does not include the utility or glove compartment so the misconception is that people think it needs to be in the trunk and then locked separately in the trunk and ammo to the side. So we see people basically do this. People have their gun locked with a key lock inside their now locked trunk. That's like the Department of Redundancy Department. It's just overly secure. It's so secure that it makes you unsecure. Let's go ahead and uh, see how ridiculous this is and see how long it takes to get the gun unlocked, loaded. I've got my keys here on my keychain. I have a feeling this is gonna be a crap show, but let's check it out. All right. All right. Moving, moving, moving. Oh crap, where are my keys? Where are my keys? Oh my gosh, this is ridiculous. <sighs> okay. Did that feel as long for you as it did for me? 2374 was the time, 2374, when I was prepped and ready, when I had everything laid out perfectly when I had my keys on me. That is the most unrealistic time you could possibly have, but that is possible, okay? 23 seconds. I think it's safe to say that that is debunked. If, uh, if I never had my keys on me or I kept them in the car like a lot of people drive with their keys or they were in a purse, you never get to it, never get to it. 
if your weapon is not in your vicinity, uh, you, you, you have no weapon. You have no way to defend yourself. So the trunk theory uh, of getting your gun, separating it, it just takes too long. That's, uh, that's not just my opinion. That's backed by, by timer, timer science. We're going to do one more now. We're going to do one more. The trunk monkey. All right, the trunk monkey. Let's see how that goes. Trunk monkey. <laughs> Woo, all right. That was 981. 981 on the trunk monkey. A lot of us carry shotguns, rifles inside our car and uh, we use it. We have them typically because we're, we're paranoid and we'd like to think about what if scenarios what if something uh, pops off and I need a bigger gun? Well, it takes about the same amount of time as it does with a pistol. It's still very, very slow. It is nice to have the added beef of a firearm, uh, that, you know, added beef of a uh, shotgun with big shells. But at the end of the day, how fast can you respond to a threat? And 981 uh, is really not that fast. Actually, that was the second shot. 896 was the first shot. Still, still not very, very great makes me rethink carrying anything in my trunk. All right, so my goal is that you take away from this video a few different things. One, I hope you take away the times. Uh, the times comparative to the other times. So I, it doesn't matter that some of the draws were two and a half seconds or five and a half seconds. It's how they were compared to the other draws. So for instance, the concealed carry appendix and also the magnet or holster where the gun's readily accessible, those were by far the fastest. Having a gun right next to you, ready to grab, no buttons to push, no levers to pull, that's ultimately the fastest comparatively. Anything in your trunk, uh, definitely the slowest. Anything you have to get out of the car to get your gun to is very, very slow. However you want to carry, that's a personal choice. My personal opinion is in the trunk is just not even an option. If you have a weapon in the trunk, I would consider alternatives like using your vehicle as the weapon to drive away or you know, ram to defend yourself, uh, or just getting out of the car and running because you're gonna be more likely to get out of a situation by just getting away than actually standing your ground and fighting. If you are gonna carry inside your vehicle. It doesn't matter like what you're carrying or, or what kind of gear you're using. and It matters how much you practice it and how much you train it. If you like what you saw, make sure you hit like and then subscribe. Uh, we have a ton more of this content coming out, especially on the vehicle defense stuff. And uh, if you'd like to see any more of that or any other kind of training or resources, check out USCCA for more YouTube as well as Instagram and also USCCA.com for more information. 